boldness gets rewarded. If you want radical new results, you've got to give yourself permission to be bolder, unapologetic for your goals and dreams, and even unreasonable with yourself. The first step is to try something radically new because radical actions lead to radical results. Bolder actions lead to bolder results. So please notice a distinction here, you guys, with Mindset Reset. I didn't say massive action. I said radical action. I'm talking about coming up with new ideas that seem crazy, nuts, unreasonable, weird, (laughs) and totally out there. It takes bold behavior to shake up those complacent thought patterns the way your brain's wired right now. Maybe you're too safe. Maybe you just play it too safe. Maybe you're a perfectionist and you don't even get started until you have every T crossed and every I dotted. So it takes bold behavior to shake up new compla- or old complacent thought patterns and create new synapses in the brain. Think about building a muscle. Lifting that same weight week after week will only make a difference for so long. After a few sessions, your body needs a new stimulus in order to promote growth. So you bump up the weight or increase the, the reps or add a new lift. So we know this in building muscle in the body. Your mind works the same way. It wants to default to the patterns it knows. So it takes something totally unexpected to inspire new connections. And if you grow, your business will grow too. Did you really get that? Your business grows as fast as you do. The truth is, getting to that next level in your business or your life, it will require you to try an idea so new that it scares the hell out of you. Yeah. Let's name a few right now. Space tourism. Hmm. Pack your bags and grab the kids. SpaceX and Blue Origin are taking you on a trip to out there. (laughs) Sounds crazy, right? But it's real. SpaceX has already booked several clients for trips to the International Space Station. By the way, it's $55 million a pop. Let's talk about the Pet Rock. Remember Pet Rock? Pet Rock, Gary Dahl was ridiculed for his ludicrous idea of selling rocks but he made millions of dollars in the 1970s on this low maintenance pet. (laughs) Professional cuddling. Yeah, what a crazy idea, or so the world thought. It turns out with so many people working remotely and socializing virtually, especially since the pandemic, there's a massive global need for physical touch and comfort. And now this idea has grown into a global industry multi-million dollar industry with many cuddle corporations, several training and certification programs, ha, and a robust freelancer community. Isn't that funny, you guys? Smell dating, yeah, that's real. Smell dating, this is a service that matches people based on their attraction to each other's scent. Clients who choose, they, they choose potential dates from a, from a mailed variety of worn t-shirt samples. It's funny, but it's real. There's no bio, there's no photos, no other info at all. Who knew this crazy idea would bring in the big bucks and lead to love? Some of these ideas that I just mentioned, they seem insane at the onset, but they were all seeds of genius. In 1991, I had the most insane idea of my life. I was a second grade school teacher. I had a stable job and I was great at it. I had two babies at home at the time. Connor wasn't born yet. I was rising through the ranks at Mary Kay International as a sales rep, and my sales events were starting to attract attention. I was, by all measure, the most successful I had been in my life. I felt like I I was like the best wife, the best mom, the best teacher, the best sales rep. And then I had an idea. Those Mary Kay sales events, that were in my home with 10 people, five people, eight people every Tuesday night, (laughs) they turned into speeches. And those speeches turned into paid opportunities. And in 1991, I had the crazy idea that changed my life forever. What if I became a professional speaker? I began to imagine a new me, a businesswoman. A businesswoman, I had never even taken a business class. 
Now, I know that dreaming of a new career doesn't sound like a crazy idea to you guys. It's not as crazy as space tourism or the pet rock, but to me, back in 1991, it was crazy. My entire existence revolved around being a wife and a mom. So this version of me was simply not part of my reality until it was. And just like you, you may not see yourself in the limelight. You may not see yourself as a best-selling author. You may not see yourself right now as a sales rep or launching your own company or growing your company globally. You may not see it until you do. It's not part of your reality until it is. So let's talk about the gap between that. So simply daring to imagine, to open your mind to new possibilities really helps. When I did that, all of a sudden, I saw opportunities everywhere. I let my teaching license expire and I began saying yes. I felt intense fear, major imposter syndrome, and even guilt, but I chose that radical change one day at a time. And I managed the internal battle by continuing to visualize this new me, this business woman in me. In short, I changed and my life changed with me. I want you to give yourself the same permission to think up some insane idea or insane new way of being for you that could light up your life. Make a list of your most ludicrous possibilities. Let your inner genius out to play. It's just a list. And they are just possibilities. You don't have to act on them. But make no mistake, my friend, just writing them down can have a profound effect on your mindset. You're actually teaching your brain to imagine something new, to grow new connections, new synopsis in your brain so you can see new possibilities. This growth happens fast, really fast. And the bolder the move, the faster the result. So here are three big, bold actions I want you to take today. Bold action number one, start imagining the best version of you. Who do you wanna be? How do you wanna show up in this world? Make a list of characteristic, of character traits, of values that you wanna emulate and go big, go radical. You really can create a new you. And then practice these new ways of being so that you're retraining your brain, creating new synopsis in your brain and recreating your self view. You become who you practice to be. I say that all the time. You become who you practice to be. Recreate and relearn the best version of you. What's the greatest contribution your new way of being could make. I mean, like really, really think about contribution and an impact that this new version of you could have. What does our world need that you could provide? What does the world need that your heart could create a message around and offer? Think big, think radical, think bold. Decide what bold action step you'll take and open the portal of possibility. Just one step. You're just writing it down and practicing this new way of being, this new bold idea. Really what you're doing, you're saying yes to living a bigger life. It really doesn't matter what action you take. The power is in taking the first radical step, writing down those possibilities, writing down those goals, imaging a new version of yourself, a bold version, a more confident version, a version that's literally creating global change. So step into this radical practice. Whatever you choose is exactly the thing you need to start living a bigger life. All it takes is willingness. So idea number two is just be more willing, willing, willing to admit that your current patterns aren't serving you anymore. Willing, willing to practice being the person you boldly created in your imagination. And guess what? You know, writing down that bold version of you and practicing it 
you become who you practice to be. So that willingness of daily practice, daily, gosh, athletes do this all the time. They actually imagine the perfect shot. They imagine the perfect swing. So that's what you're doing. You're rehearsing this new version of you. So be willing to practice this new version of you. And then finally, ooh, let's talk about the big one. The aha moment comes when you actually start seeing results. You do. You Serendipity happens. You're the fortuitous. You just start being at the right place at the right time. A book drops out of your bookshelf that you've had for months, maybe years, and it actually is about whatever is this new way of being you were thinking about, whatever this bold action step was. Maybe you have a conversation with someone that you haven't talked to in a long time and they bring up the topic similar to what this bold thought was or this bold way of being. Just watch how being willing to write down those new ways of being, knowing that boldness gets rewarded so you're willing to think outside the box and practice these new ways of being, you are tapping the quantum realm and you will be placed at the right place at the right time for all of these new ideas to start developing within you. You guys, it all starts in the mind first. Everything is created twice. First in the mind and then in a physical realm. So be willing to be bold, be outrageous, be unreasonable with your goals. Write them down. Next to it, create new ways of being that you can practice. Be willing to practice those new ways of being. being, And then just watch. Be aware. Just watch. That's step number three. Just watch and be aware of all the serendipity that starts happening. You're at the right place at the right time. A book becomes available for you. A conversation becomes available for you. You are creating a very new reality for you with every bold thought you have. So I hope that this conversation inspires you to think bolder, think more unreasonable. Think about the pet rock that this that this dude invented and the great success that came from it. You could just have the next best idea. Think big, be willing to practice those ways of being and then notice the serendipity the fortuitous, how you're just put in the right place at the right time. And milk those, like acknowledge it. Oh my gosh, here it is, under the right place at the right time. You follow those three tips to boldness and your life will look radically, radically different. Boldness gets rewarded. I need to find somebody in the network marketing industry that's a very well-known person like Jim Rohn or Bob Proctor and ask them to write a testimonial. So I'm at a convention and there's Bob Proctor across the room. And it's a dance. We're at a ball. Everybody's dressed up. He's in a tuxedo. And someone said, there's Bob Proctor. Go ask him to dance. And then you could talk to him about writing a testimonial for your book. And I was with, <laughs> and I was with Don and Steve Siebel and they know Bob Proctor. And they said, oh, he doesn't write testimonials. He won't do that. And as soon as someone says he won't do that, what do you think happens in my like leadership, don't mess with the princess kind of mind? Well, let's just see if he will. So I walk over there and I told my friends, I'm gonna ask him to dance. He's gonna say yes. And then while I'm dancing with him, I'm gonna say, I wrote this really incredible book. And if you would read a chapter of it, maybe you'd be interested in writing a testimonial. That's what I wanted, right? And all you have to do is want it. That's what I wanted. So I walk over there, and at first I'm very confident. Then as I'm walking with each step, I'm like, oh my God. I'm walking over to Bob Proctor, and I was so nervous. And I said, Mr. Proctor, my name is Lisa Jimenez. Would you like to dance? And he looked at me, and he said, no, thank you. I said, okay, thank you. And I start walking back, and Don and Steve are over here laughing at me. You got rejected. You got rejected. I'm like, oh my gosh, how embarrassing in front of all those other people. And he, he said, he said, no. He said, no, thank you, Mr. Gracious. No, thank you. <laughs> Two weeks later, I write Bob Proctor a letter. And at the top of the page, it said, you said no to me once. 
And then in the letter it said, I wrote this amazing book and I believe it will free millions of people from their fear. Could you please read chapter one and if you think it will transform people's thoughts and beliefs on fear, would you please write a testimonial? About three days later, my cell phone rings. It's Bob Proctor. <laughs> and he's laughing on the other end. And he said, you have some guts, girl. And he said, anyone that could write a book, Conquer Fear, have me say no to her for dancing, and then write back and ask to write a testimonial. I will write that testimonial. That's not the end of the story. However, here's the training and teaching point. Everybody go like this. Everybody go like this. This is called your comfort zone. <laughs> Some people have little baby comfort zones. Some people have big comfort zones. But everybody has a comfort zone, yes? Me walking up to Bob Proctor and asking him to dance, where do you think that was in my comfort zone? Where was it? I think it was right up to it, right? It was right up to the comfort zone. I was scared, I was embarrassed, I was nervous, I was, what if he says no, and he did? <laughs> okay, that's the comfort zone. Now, here's the operative question. Where was I in my comfort zone when I wrote that letter? Outside the comfort zone, just a bit. So what does that teach you? You've got to be willing to go just a little bit outside your comfort zone. That's where all the juicy stuff is. So not only did I get that testimonial from Bob Proctor, not only did he buy the first 100 and then several thousand copies after that, but then I'm speaking in Atlanta, Georgia, in front of thousands of people. I'm the opening keynote speaker. He's the closing keynote speaker. I am almost done with my presentation, and I'm ready to say thank you, and then music comes on. And I'm like, OK, hello. I didn't ask for music. I went, Bob Proctor comes up on the stage in front of everybody, and he says, Lisa Jimenez, May I have this dance? <laughs> and so here's Bob Proctor and I dancing on the platform in front of all these people as I shared the story. I told everybody the story now. I got past my comfort zone, then I went past the comfort zone. Now, here's the point. What do you get when you're willing to go past the comfort zone? What do you get? What you want. What you want. You get your dreams, and dreams come true when you're willing to go outside that comfort zone. My commitment for you this morning was that you would truly shift your beliefs of fear, rejection, failure, and success so that you can be the contribution you were called to be. Transform those beliefs into empowering ones so that you every morning will get up and be the walking, talking conduit of faith and power. Thank you. Are you ready to learn a formula to help you stop being stuck in fear and level up your productivity? To go from being overwhelmed to a high performer? To turn your scarcity mindset into an abundance magnet? Then you want to come to the Mastermind Retreat in Tuscany, Italy. You'll enjoy six magical days immersed in the beauty, the culture, the richness of the Tuscan countryside of Florence and Siena and San Gimignano. You'll mastermind with other like-minded people in a 13th century castle as you apply my Mindset Reset formula to recreate yourself, your business, and your life. There's only two spots left. Get registered today at lisajcoaching.com forward slash retreats. And I'll see you in Tuscany.